Greetings, Kelly. Uh, here's your critique for your first two projects. We'll start with the uh, second project, motion time, shutter speed, uh, sort of items here. Um, it's like you've explored a lot with um, painting with light. It certainly can be uh, entertaining. Um, so this one um, kind of like the form of the light. There's a little bit, I'd almost like a little bit more of the uh, environment to come through. I see some figures behind there and they kind of totally get lost and they're a little bit blurry so I don't know if uh, you need a try if you had a tripod or if it got bumped or or what but um, could help to make it a little bit sharper. Um, here I think there's a similar issue the figures I don't know if I mind this one blurry so much or if I just want more um, environmental information. This one becomes a little bit more interesting. I like the, the light leading up here and then this thing form. These little bits of, of blue that I get in the, in the environment. Um, I think uh, are actually pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, your explorations overall, I think you're, you're, you're finding some uh, good stuff out. And I think this is actually my, my favorite one. I really like the structured concentric radial that we have in this line leading up into the figure here and just a little bit of the environment yeah I, I like i like the multiple elements that we have uh, playing here you know this type of light the figure the circle a little bit of environment i, I think the complexity helps it and uh, i like that one quite a bit it's better in color as i think most painting with light items are i think that it could work in grayscale but usually depending on what you're doing with the color they work better in color this is actually a pretty nice image too. This is the panning image. Uh, the swing right here is uh, fairly crisp. I love that. There's a nice crisp, crisp shadow there and there. And then a little bit of the blurriness as, as it moves to the tree. Um, it's the only way I think could improve it if, if the shutter speed was just a little bit longer and the background got a little bit blurrier, but you might be at a limitation here because it looks like you shot it during daylight and that can be difficult to get slow enough shutter speeds to, to do some serious panning with. So, but um, it, it is an interesting image, just the overall composition and structure of it I like. I like the swing sets, the secondary swing sets that's out of focus, and it works out well. Uh, the dog image, um, I'm assuming another panning image here. This one, uh, there's nothing really sharp, nothing I really grab onto. Uh, the feet here, I think, um, probably should be cropped out or actually I'd almost rather see like a little bit more of that leg because then it gives me this sort of interaction between this human and the dog um, but the background's kind of cluttery and uh, you know not my favorite uh, this one's um, oh, this, this would be really nice if it's like head were sharp and the rest of your body was blurry and I like the ball up here and you could actually, like, if we crop this image, I think this would become much stronger if we cropped it right here, just keeping his paw in the frame and then getting rid of all that stuff on the left side, left quarter or third, get rid of all that. And I think you have a much stronger image compositionally. Um, I still would want, like, the face or something of the dog sharp, but um, it becomes a much better composition if we crop out that left quarter. This is an inch, this one's um, more interesting. Still a little bit like the negative space is a little bit cluttery and distracting from him because the interesting I think is this contrast between this part of his body and that part of the body. And there's no way to crop out that top left corner without cropping his body. So you need you need to work and think about that whole space of the photograph a little bit more because that all everything in that photograph comes at the viewer and informs them and if it's stuff that you don't want in there it really shouldn't be in there in some way shape or form that can be the frustrating thing with photography is, is achieving that because our world is quite often quite visually cluttery and we need to simplify that down in photographs <clears throat> now this is kind of a nice photograph um, probably the best one of the dog but i really like the one where he's chasing that ball i just wish his head was a little bit sharper or something um, but you know, overall, this one is probably the better, best of those. And uh, it works grayscale or um, 
color. I think the grayscale has a little bit advantage where uh, it has a better range of contrasts and values. The uh, one color one was a little bit dark and just need to be lightened up and that, and that can be done again for Photoshop or something. So. Uh, this is, uh, let's see, trying, this is kind of interesting. I like that the negative space has been simplified here and we're focusing just on the figure here uh, and then the look. Um, trying to decide if it gets beyond just a snapshot kid shot. I don't know, but uh, it, is, it is kind of interesting. All right, so that was your your second group. Let's take a look at the first project you did. Uh, good explorations in there, particularly with painted light. I really like that painting, that shot of um, the swing set. I think those were your two strongest images there. Uh, these, I think, actually were all uh, very strong. The only I like this composition. The only thing I would say is uh, check your white balance on your camera. It seems like the, it's either on auto, but I'm guessing it's probably set for daylight, and then we have this yellowish light. And you might be able to get uh, control that color and get more accurate color if you pay attention to your white balance on your camera. But I love I love the composition. I think it's interesting. Even like the uh, blurry finger here, kind of pointing, and then the duplicitous nature of the, the figures here reflected. Nice. And this is nice too, very similar sort of idea, but with the cracked mirror kind of adds another layer to it. Um, you know, you're almost creating sort of a narrative as we look at all these images. And there, there's a nice cohesiveness here. This is really uh, interesting how we get these very, you know, just positioning the mirrors differently. And we get a different perspective of your face here versus here, and it almost seems like two different people or something like that. Uh, but, uh, but it's not. And, uh, very nicely constructed composition. Your first body of work is uh, much more cohesive than the second. That might be due to the nature of the project, where the um, second one will kind of force you in all these different technical things. Uh, but cohesively, very nice and cohesive here. And this is really nice photograph. You know, photographs and photographs here. And I like the use of the depth of field. So it's very effective. And I think this one is. Too, and I'm not sure which one, which of these two is better. I think both of are both are successful. They're very similar in their content and meaning and whatnot. And you know, if I were to have a whole body of work of these things, I would choose one or the other. I don't know that one is necessarily stronger than the other. They're both good photographs. So, all right, good job with those, and uh, looking forward to seeing uh, more. We will move on and do another critique here. <clears throat> All right, Nathan, uh, here's your critique for Art 28 here. Let's start with there's Module 2, the shutter speed one. Um, read some of the comments about the, the scissor hands. Yeah, I saw Edward Scissor's hands in the theater one time. Um, yeah, this is kind of interesting, the, the melding and the molding of the scissors in the form, and I like the idea. I do wish one or the other or both were a little bit sharper, like if the scissors were sharper or your hair was sharper or something like that. I think it could be a little bit stronger of an image, but I like the idea, and I know it's kind of a difficult thing to do and play with, and I'm guessing you've tried several of these. The grayscale actually seems just a little bit sharper, and maybe that's due to playing with contrast or whatnot. Um, I love the concept, the idea, and I think if you kept playing with it and kept pushing it, you'd get what you want. It just would take time. <clears throat> this image uh, I find uh, intriguing as well. Just the, just the uh, perspective and um, you know this this sort of uh, moment we don't often see from a perspective we don't see. It's like the same perspective. <laughs> it's very uh, very interesting perspective to see from. Uh, the lighting is is kind of interesting too, with this this lighting coming down from below, and um, you know it almost seems a little bit theatrical or something like that. But your but your uh, expression is very honest and doesn't look staged at all. So I think there's a nice, you know, we could probably actually crop actually yeah crop this thing off right there, 
and I think the image just gets a little bit stronger because I find this thing a little distracting. And then it's, I, oh, I, I like that a lot better when we crop that top off. I liked it before, but I like it even better. It becomes much, I think, a much stronger photograph and the emphasis and focal point gets much more on this area and I don't get distracted with this stuff up here. And it also becomes this interesting relationship between this, this, and your head. It creates sort of a triangular arrangement. And I would say the same thing in grayscale. Actually, I like it a little bit better in color. But I think it's still strong in grayscale. It could work there. Uh, this is a nice panning image. <clears throat> the horse's head is nice and crisp. We see the muscles and all that tone. And then the trees whizzing by and the hair flowing on the rider with the cape. And, you know, good, good job thinking about the costume and cape and all that sort of stuff. Um, so uh, good job with panning. Uh, this is certainly a nice shot. And I think it's strong in grayscale, but I, you lost a little bit of information here. Maybe got a little too carried away with pushing the contrast. This might actually, like the rest of it's fine out here. Well, actually, your shirt's a little blown out. So the background's fine, but you, this would require some local adjustments. Where in Photoshop, if you have Photoshop or GIMP, where you could just select this area, the figure, and particularly the front of the horse, and maybe even the back down here. But this is there. I really want to see that muscular stuff that we saw. In the, in the color image and, and maintain that. So you'd have to not just do a global um, change, you actually have to do this and then do a local adjustment here where you get less contrast to pull out this information. And those details really do make or break photographs. Um, <clears throat> simply because there are so many photographs out there that if you are not perfect and 100% with it, yeah, somebody else has done it better. <clears throat> I do like the Phoenix. Um, and I read you talking about how you had to use both hands and coordinate that, and that is, uh, I think, quite impressive, just reading about that. But the image itself is interesting and engaging, too, and it's interesting how your shadow, you almost get like this beak-like form, which is mimicked right here. So that is, uh, I think it's, um, you know, it's good. I like it. Uh, a little less desaturated here. Not, I, mean, I think it works here too. I don't, I'm not sure which is stronger or, or whatnot. So, but I think they're both good. All right, Nathan, let's move on. Take a look at your first um, portfolio. Uh, that was a nice portrait right there. Um, yeah, I actually really liked all three of these images. I think are really strong, and interesting, and engaging. And they have a curiosity to them. I love this one. This one just leaves me so many questions. Just this hand and this uh, outside, inside. Uh, let's, let's start with here. We'll take a look at them full scale. But yeah, really well constructed compositionally. Um, I love the use of the focus, the narrow depth of field of focus here. The face out of focus, the emphasis on the hands, the nice contrast and textures here. And also the textures that are created here, these softer textures in contrast with those things. And of course, it almost uh, seems a little steel like in the breaking up of the plane with these uh, hard horizontal and vertical lines though you do go outside of black white red yellow and blue but not that much and uh, yeah this image I just really love I think these these are so strong you know, these could be turned into a whole portfolio of work part of a whole portfolio of work um, they're really engaging and strong. There's all this emphasis on texture and hands. And that's interesting because a lot of times when we have color photographs, there's a de-emphasis on texture and uh, color really comes into play. But you still have this nice, and it's this light that's coming across here, just really accentuating the texture here, as well as the texture on hand. And I contrast those, contrast it with these. Um, you know, very nicely composed and thought out photographs, as is this one. Um, overall, just uh, well done. Um, just to, again, it seems like the emphasis on textures, and I like how you break up the space compositionally, and they become challenging. And uh, there you go. The, ho the horse one is uh, nice too, but it's just not nearly as interesting as the other three. And I don't think it's just because uh, it's a person, and you know, we tend to like people, but because there um, was a relationship between different things. The relationship between your environment and you created a lot more, uh, for me, connections and thoughts and, and, and provocation of ideas. And this one is just more like horse. And uh, so 
there's, there's, it is a nice composition. It is a nice photograph, of course, but for me, it just doesn't push me conceptually like the other three do. All right, well done, and uh, looking forward to seeing more. <laughs>